in public. Um, um, I think we had her for a moment and then um, let me see. All right. I'm just going to make her. Here we go. Hi, Erica. Um, you should look for a I think you have two screens open right now. Um, I'm making one of them. Okay, here we are. All right, we brought her in. Yay, Got Erica. Her. Yay, Erica. Yeah, I don't know what the problem was, but I, then I tried through my phone and finally got on my phone and my computer. <laughs> like one does. Wow. Welcome. Wow. <laughs> Good morning. So the plan today, I think, was just to go through the guidelines, right? And some of the <clears throat> the comments, suggestions, questions that I'm putting out there and to start talking through it to make some changes, perhaps. perhaps. Yeah. Right. And whatever other things we might have thought up as we were looking through it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, get along I, with whatever. You... For sure. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I think guidelines are, are, are worthy of plenty of attention here. And I'll just note. I know that Shelly at some point has to, you know, let us uh, fly on our own here. Um, uh, but mm -hmm. kind of the the next piece on the action plan side, I think, is to um, is to consolidate uh, and and be continually more intentional about sort of following up on people's specific interests and the roles they want to play. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we're capable of that. Um, as a small group or even as a large group, you know, I don't, I don't think we necessarily need Shelly for that, but I just wanted to sort of name that as a, a next key step outside the guidelines. Maybe so I'm working on wrapping, I'm working up, wrapping up my work with the four communities that by, that I've been working with by the end of October. So that's, that's my, my cutoff time. That's your goal. Yeah. All right. So we All got right. you for another month. <laughs> yeah. Let's think yeah. of everything we want from her right now for them. <laughs> so my <laughs> hope is that we'll, so my hope is that we'll start with some changes to the guidelines, but you will likely end up completing that yourself. You'll have to likely have to do that. And then um, I think that our October meeting was to focus on um, bringing back any feedback that you got from the community and then hopefully the board formally voting on accepting your goals and strategies and a little bit of a conversation around an implementation plan. Actually, we probably should do some of that today as well, right? To present that in October. E sure. Right. Okay. At least to have some kind of a an idea of a structure to present to the board in October. Does that sound like something that we should be doing for October too? Probably. Okay. Do we have, uh, Greg, do you have any, uh, have you looked at anything? Do we know what, what kind of feedback, if any, we got about the plan i haven't looked in a few days the last time i looked uh it was limited i think there was only one or two um um i can take a peek why don't you all keep going here and then so why don't we plan on doing like the first half of the meeting we'll go through the guidelines and then we'll circle back for the because i don't think that the guidelines you likely I don't know if you'd be ready to bring anything to the October meeting yet at that point. It might still be a, a small group conversation. Um, so let's let's spend kind of the first 20 or so minutes, 30 minutes going through some of this and getting an idea of how much potential work you might want to do on on the guidelines. Okay. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I have the ability to share yet. Greg, have you given me the... Um, you should just have it automatically, but um, what happened? What, what... Is that working? There we go. Okay, great. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Cluster development. Okay, can you see that? Yes. If you make it bigger, yep. I can see it, but it's not very readable. Is that better? That's better. Okay. So um, one kind of thing is just the vision versus mission, mission statement, and they actually are different things. So I would suggest that you just stick with mission statement. So it's a minor thing. Um, um, 
I agree. Yes. It is. It's like the first sentence actually says the trust's mission. Right. Right. So it's kind of going yeah, back and so forth. It that seems can be like mission seems the correct word there. Yeah, it's minor. Um, and then just the you have this efforts and projects that are the past. And then I would suggest that this might be the spot to put in your new goals and strategies to put it up front. So pretty minor suggestions, just uh, updating it. Um, roles and responsibilities, just suggesting maybe a live link because that um, is just a simple way to help people access information about your trust. And then I just highlighted the thes because it's so many thes, the, 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 uh, It just jumped out at me as possibly re restructuring some of the sentences. Um, can, I ask, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, to the group. Um, this, there seems to be a lot of uh, detail about the procedure of the trust. And I'm wondering, is that really necessary for a funding mm. guideline? I mean, I, I think a link to the bylaws is great. I think the purpose um, is great. Um, and, you know, to, to have like general information that, you know, the trust is, you know, has a, a membership board from whatever, and they make the decisions. Um, but I, it seems like there's a lot of information here that's more like an oper operational procedural manual versus a guideline for funding. I think that having some of this can be helpful because it's not just you, it's outside people learning about the board and how you function. So I think having some can be helpful. It kind of helps to set expectation, I think also, um, and kind of the scope of the trust role in the community. So I think some can be really beneficial. There may be spaces to, to pare it down a little bit or to tighten it up. Um, and where it's kind of duplicative, Sometimes yeah. it seems like it's saying the same thing over and over again to me. Yes, so can, that's what that's what I found, a little bit of that. Yeah. And that's... So you're, this part about, I think it's on the bottom, it's where we can see right now, the bottom of that page and the top of the next page, all this stuff about not participating in legislative hoo-ha. It seems the only thing that had to be there is that the trust should not attempt to influence, should not participate in, uh, any political campaign on behalf Campaigns. of any candidate that candidate, should yes. be there but influence yes. legislation yeah. that's okay as far as i can right. see that's stupid right. to say we can't do that's right and you we can't you, and you clearly have been doing it so it's, exactly it's it's not correct yes so update some of that and you know i i because that's a value of yours i think having language in there um, is helpful. In most cases, trust wouldn't have any of that kind of language because most aren't quite as politically active as you are. Um, but you definitely don't need to not be in political campaigns. It's just the candidate campaigns. Right. I think that's that's the part of that that should stay and the rest of it can just go away, I think. Okay, good. And then it touches on powers in that section, but you have a power section. So I think that just separating things out and not being, being duplicative, I think that that could be make it more readable and not as yes. long. Can, yes. Can I just interject yeah. with a quick question so I can take some notes here? Um, Shelly, um, is this is the one you have on the screen the same version you emailed out a couple of weeks ago? I hope so. Okay. So I yeah, didn't make you, any you, changes. Okay, I think great. so. Thank it you. looks yeah. the same to me. Yeah, I didn't All make right. any other changes. Awesome. Go on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, so that was the influence legislation. That's okay. And then, um, again, just kind of the duplication, like I think any discussion of funds can be, oh, I'm kind of suggesting a funding subsection. So the way that you've outlined community preservation act versus another, I think you could just have a funding section and kind of touch on some of the elements of funding for the trust instead of breaking it out like that. I think it could be a little simpler. So that's that's my set my suggestion is um, instead of having CPA and then non CPA funding, just have a funding section and and have a few sentences about the funding that you receive and um, how you manage that. Okay. Yeah, I, it feel it felt odd to me to have this management of the trust, all these things in the CPA Act 
so I don't know like prominent pulled out like that yeah so pro I mean it is prominent it's where we've gotten all yeah, our yeah. money but we're hoping it doesn't stay that way so yeah I think so that, I'd like to I have think it. that yeah I think that all of this likely made a lot of sense when you were starting, getting going, establishing kind of different roles and relationships in the community. But now that things have changed, I think it, you could kind of consolidate and simplify things a little bit. Agreed. I agree. Yep. And then, so eligible activities. Um, yeah, I would agree to change it. <laughs> It's again kind of duplicative with the CPA language, um, right. and I I, I might say, and you might want to with eligible activities, you might want to kind of pull out more. Like I'm just putting examples could be site acquisition, pre development, development funding, or like a little bit more general of like the kind of activities that you're interested in funding instead of any reference specifically to CPA. Yeah, because that's not really our eligible activity. That's just saying something about CPA funds over again. And there that would be much more useful if it had in there yep. some of the kinds of things that we do instead of that. Yep. I think that's yep. Yep. Yeah. If we can um, if we could remember um uh Carol, we could also state in there that we can't I don't think, well, with the CPA at least, we can't um fund administrative costs because that came up as a huge issue this past year. That's true. It isn't that, I mean, that's part of the CPA rules. And so right. I don't know that has to be in our thing. It's part of the CPA rules. Right? Well, so that, sure. that's... So, whatever. I don't care. But it's just like, it's just that it's not really up to us. It's up to them. And that's what they're, they say. So. Yeah. So that's yeah. not your, your eligible activities or your, that's, that's, that's their thing. If they don't yeah. want you to be using their resources for that, but you don't need to put that in your guidelines. You're, you're putting outward facing what you want to fund. Yeah. That seems right to me. So I think it's just once you formally accept the goals and strategies, then you just take from that, like what are the key things that you want to fund based on the goals that you've identified? And then, um, sorry, just yeah. to jump in a little bit, just a note that um, I'm not sure that that the goals that we've um, identified have encompassed some of the things we actually have funded uh, in the recent past, specifically the uh, emergency rental assistance that we did um, at mm -hmm. the beginning of COVID, and and the um, the the thing for Craig's doors that that was um, sort of funding their pre-funding their grant or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, mm. those things are. are we it shouldn't was, forget uh, when, when we yeah. rewrite this, we shouldn't forget those sorts of things. Right. Yeah. It was rental subsidies. Right. And I think keep in mind that this is a living document that it can be modified. So if, you know, God forbid, there's another pandemic in three years or whatever, then you could go in and you could modify this if we don't include it now. So don't feel like it's, this is not the end all. These these documents are meant to be modified as you change. For sure. I, I think though, sure. the, the, yeah, I agree with Rob that probably at some point in the near future, like you know, when we're ready to bring a revised version of this to the full trust, there should be some discussion around you know, do you know, sh sh in or out on on that sort of thing, and you know, do we want um, to name that or not? You know, because I think it will. That's a healthy discussion to have. I think. Mm -hmm. I really would like to see the guidelines be broad enough and and whatever the word is, robust enough, so they allow for everything we have ever we have done, plus maybe some things we haven't. So they're kind of an incentive to get us to do things, not a, not a restriction. I, yes, I, I agree we can change it, but while we're at it now, I just assume have it be uh, as, as, as broad as it makes sense, you know? I don't know. So the only thing I would My say is sense. that you, you, don't, you don't want it to be confusing if you're gonna have goals that don't encompass it. Like you don't want it to be confusing to say that these are our goals, oh, but we'll fund everything. Uh -huh. So I just think you wanna keep that in mind a little bit of not making it a confusing document. 
So c- c- correct me if I've got, so you're suggesting that the guideline should be in a kind of consistent agreement with the, with the strated, with the strategies that we're just developing. They should be like hand in glove with each other. Is that what you're saying, Sh- Sh- Shelley? So I, I think that you could potentially have some um, flexibility where it doesn't necessarily have to, like we've said before, that there might be things that you fo- that you do throughout the year that aren't completely in the goals. I just think that if you're saying your goals are these more narrow focus, but the, the funding priorities are really wide, that for the person who's reading the guidelines and wanting to apply, that could be that could just be confusing because we're also going to come up with um, criteria. I can't remember if there's criteria in this plan already, but, and you know, like is your criteria then going to match your specific goals more or is it going to be more broad? So I just think that's something that you need to talk through because you don't, it's not helpful if this becomes confusing to people. Right. So I just, I was going to jump in. I, I think that when, you know, this document was developed, you know, John Hornick and some of the trusts wanted to be really careful about, you know, providing funding for projects and being, you know, kind of judicious and deliberate. And I also thought this document, it's its long. I thought it was kind of redundant and confusing if we have a strategic action plan or there's a comprehensive housing policy for the town and how do they all interact. And so, you know, for me, um, you know, I feel like a lot of this document could be eliminated and you know, like you were saying, kind of broader eligible activities, some funding priorities, and really then it's like, how does some of this align with the strategic strategic action plan or some other document the trust is using? And we don't have to, you know, try to reiterate things in this these funding guidelines. This is, you know, an internal document that the trust developed that then is provided to, you know, potential applicants. But to me, it's really about, um, you know, how is the trust funding projects they think are important or meet the goals of the town or trust. And so I just, I feel like right now we're getting stuck in, you know, writing things like, you know, a funding priority here in this document to me, you know, maybe isn't even necessary, you know, um, because it it, it will be confusing. And to me, what's more important would be, um, you know, like there's some review criteria or, you know, what is the application form? What are we asking just to make sure that the trust is, Kind of thoroughly reviewing a proposal, and so I, I, I don't know how others feel, but I just, you know, the trust, like like what Rob said, the trust has funded things that come up that may not be, you know, uh, in these in the you know, explained in this document, but it is important, and so I just it seems strange that we would be accepting an application, say next year, someone is like, oh, there's this great opportunity to do some loan program, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's not in this document, we're not going to fund it. It just seems like we should set ourselves up for being able to review things as long as, you know, we spend time with Shelly really looking at the, you know, strategies and action plan and goals. And I, to me, that's what's going to be guiding the trust. And this document right here would be guiding the review of an application for funding, not setting up new priorities or, you know, things like that. So. So to me, having a, bullet or something that says that the trust will consider other projects instead of thinking that you need to outline everything that you've invested in as things that you will do now if it's if it doesn't really fit your goals at this point. So I, I guess that my concern would just be if you were to put emergency rent assistance explicitly or, or something like that, and then those are the applications that you get and you don't get ones that are development oriented, which is development is much more of a priority right now. So I, I don't think that we have to do it in a way where it doesn't allow you to consider other things that come up or that seem critical. But I do think that if you're going to put funding priorities in that it should follow the goals and the strategies that you've outlined. I, what if I, we just didn't have funding priorities in here? I mean, that's, I think maybe part of what, or, what I one of the things I grabbed onto from what Nate was saying, what if this is not here at all? Would language better be that we would consider applications that support our action plan? Right. I mean, so right, right now, to be honest, right? So we've say we've the trust has provided funding for like six projects. Have we ever gone through this document? to say, no. is it, 
a funding priority? Is it an eligible activity? Does it meet neighborhood context and design? Do, it, you know, and so if if we're not using this as kind of the rubric to do something, I don't think we need it. I mean, I think like John, like I said, wanted to be really careful uh, in terms of setting the trust up for how to review something. There's a lot in here. I mean, maybe this becomes something else that the trust uses. I don't know. I just, I feel like if we're, if how we review projects, either the how we review projects has to change to match what we want to put in this document or we're not, I don't think we need a 20 page document. Um, you know, it can be a two page document setting up, you know, in terms of, you know, the, basically there's eight pages before we get to the application form. And maybe those eight pages are boiled down to like a page, a page and a half of like, you know, directing people to write the action plan or, you know, having a few call outs of some things here, but, you know, I mean, why are we having neighborhood context design and sustainability as something if we're, we don't ever really look at it? And it, I, I don't know. I just, I mean, if I, if I were someone and I saw this, I'm like, wow, this is like a, a really detailed application. I don't know, I'd be curious to know, do other trusts have something like this document or is this like pretty, is a standard or is this like beyond what other trusts do? Um, oh no, I think that this is more than what other trusts do. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, interesting. yeah, more. Can I? But I, I think that so what I, I, I can appreciate what a lot of what Nate's saying because unfortunately, oftentimes we create different kinds of plans and guidelines, and then we just don't look at them again. And I'm trying <laughs> to encourage trust to not do that to make it where it's a document that's useful and. Because it's things like when new trustees come on and it's helpful to have them be able to see how do you function instead of them having to come to meetings and then people say, well, usually it's it's all just oral of like, well, usually we kind of do it this way, but not, or people outside of the trust wanting to learn what are you doing and what are your values, like have one place where they can go. So like I'm trying to encourage trust to make it in a way where it can be a useful living document that you really actually will Um turn to, but then that does mean that it should be more succinct and useful. So some of the funny priorities, like some of this is speaking to your, to your values. And I, I think that that's helpful cues in the community and to potential applicants. Um, it also can be where you can say, well, you know, this is what our guidelines are. Like you can kind of fall back on it, it when you're prioritizing. It's a part of helping to prioritize applications or to push back on applicants if it doesn't quite fit your values. But I do think that you get into more detail than most do here. The neighborhood context, some of that is can be really problematic just because of the anti-housing development kind of sentiment. So I, I maybe would modify that or not have these four separate categories, just have like five bullets that kind of are pulling out the key kind of values from these many different bullets. Um, can, can I insert yeah. one, one practical thing um, and noting uh, the first bullet, which I think is more perhaps more relevant, not necessarily in the context of multi-unit rental, um, but we have um, assured a few trust members, I'm thinking of Grover specifically has been earnest in their feedback on um, finding a way to name um uh or, or, or carve out the importance of serving ELI and 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 low income people um mm -hmm. you know and I think we actually have a note on the the draft action plan that has that possibility um you know that would so, so I you know I, I am I'm generally in agreement that we can massively reduce this the 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 uh the framework here but I think a specific that probably should remain somewhere doesn't have to be under what exists here as funding priorities, um, but somewhere we should name, you know, we want to serve people, um, you know, of a certain, you know, a certain income, um, not necessarily exclusively, but we want to sort of find a place for that, I think. Yeah. So I, I can send you what Lynn came up with. And I think that actually a couple of the bullets that your team would, your group would really probably like some of the language. Um, Great. But it's like four or five bullets under kind of this, this kind of a section where it's just giving some, they have a um, significant sensitivity to making sure that some of the affordable housing that they're funding is deeply affordable. 
and that it helps to um, break down kind of um, racial segregation. So they're kind of speaking to wanting housing spread out, affordable housing spread out around the community or oh, racial and economic, say. racial or econ and economic, something like that. But so, so they're kind of setting up some of their their, their values that kind of undergird some of their work and, and what they want to be funding. So, uh, but like this minimum of 15 affordable units, like that's so detailed. And a lot of that gets into just kind of feasibility. And so I, I think it becomes just a lot of, a lot of stuff to read. So, um, it sounds like there's some, uh, support for, perhaps keeping this kind of a section, but significantly cutting it back and pulling out some key ideas. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, and then funding guidelines. So what my comment is that it really only reflects funding for development. Do you imagine the trust might support a developer's acquisition? Or would the trust purchase the two parcels that we identify in goal 1A? Like some of our conversation has been that the trust might help facilitate new parcels, but not necessarily buy them. And that might mean helping to fund an acquisition of a site. Or do you imagine that your funding would primarily just be development? Well, I it think we, it, exactly. I mean, we did do that with the project at Belgertown Road. But you purchased it first, so that wouldn't really apply here because the trust purchased it with the town, right? Yeah. Yes. So this would be more if you if you imagine that you would ever allocate resources for a developer to buy land, and you know it's it's much less complicated to just do the development piece and not acquisition. So it's fine if you keep it like this, but if you do imagine that you might invest in, you know, Valley purchasing a piece of land. Um, I don't, that, Valley that never asked, one. Valley never asked us that, but if they asked us that, they said, we have something here we want to do. We need somebody to get a hold of the land right now. And we, we need you to help us do that. I can't imagine not considering it. So yeah. yeah. Habit for Humanity has sort of proposed that. So we might want to just add a little bit of language. And I think that this can be cut back a little bit. It probably can be consolidated a little bit, but to have just one language around your expectations, if it was an acquisition, a, a land acquisition or a, a building acquisition, because it's, it's different than if it's specifically development. You just want to make sure that your investment is, is protected because it's, it wouldn't be deed restricted at the point you'd need some sort of restriction on the land. But anyways, we might want to just add a little bit of language just so that's covered. That's where just Where my... are you seeing this go? I'm get, sorry, I'm behind here, but where would you put this extra thing, which yes, I think is a good idea, but where would it go? Well, I think we just put it right in this funding guidelines and just make sure that there's a bullet that addresses if it's acquisition versus development. Okay. Number, number five. Yep. Yeah, under five. It'd just be adding some language. Yeah, the documents number called, five. Okay. Yeah, the documents called funding guidelines, and then you have number five that says funding guidelines. Well, whatever. Also, this whole bunch of stuff in here that's about things being given as grants is not relevant. Yeah, we should we should yeah. strike that. I think. Get rid yeah. of that bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff like that where, to Nate's point, that it needs to be brought up to how you've actually been functioning, operating, and some of this is how maybe you thought that you would at the beginning, and things have just changed. So there's a lot of that that you'll you'll need to do that I certainly can't do. Um, and then, like development loans are limited to up to fifty thousand dollars per unit. Is that something that you still follow? Is that different? Do you pay attention to that even? Not really. I don't, yeah, I don't think we should have a limit, you know. Some communities do, but if you if it's not something that you've really done, then it just well, may not feel- Well, something you probably should bring back to the larger trust. We can say that, yeah. you know, we may want to consider in terms of the way we've operated, not to put that in there. Um, and I mean, we, we may, 
as the discussion comes up, when people ask for funding, there are members who will break it down in terms of cost per unit. And then, you know, the discussion happens, but we don't necessarily look at the cost per unit as, you know, as a make it or break it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this language, um, priority will be given to projects that can demonstrate significant leverage of other funds, including state, federal, and private financing. This really isn't how things work. It's really that the local contribution needs to be first, and then the developer takes that to the state for state and federal resources. So it's it's not really just how the process works with most affordable housing development. So that's why I'm just questioning that it probably should just be removed. Yeah, it's I, I agree. It, that, that's how it's. I think the implication is um, not that they should have it in hand, but how are they thinking about getting it? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, Valley is very good at saying, you know, with your contribution, we can then leverage that to get X, Y, and Z from the state. So I think it's much more about how are they going yeah. to present that in understanding. I mean, I suppose, you know, it's pretty clear that there's no way that the trust would ever be able to fund 100%, but it just, yeah. I think, is is good for trust members to know how they're thinking about the finance piece of it. So restructure the sentence to be more developments that are going to yeah. seek state and federal resources. In the okay. whole picture of their, of their sources, we are, <clears throat> there's a lot of other funds that have been leveraged. Yeah. Or, or, will be, I think, is probably the operative. Whatever. That, in yeah. that pro forma thing that they present, it's not like all on us. Nothing ever could be anyway, so. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Okay. I'm just going through some of the key things that I brought in here and then um, oh, and then just the language. You know, of course, DHCD is is no longer, so all that needs to be modified. I just, can we go back to the grant agreement for a second? Yep. Isn't in, a, in order to fruit, uh, receive funding, enter into an, a grant agreement, usually the grant agreement's with the town, isn't it? Is it actually with the trust? I think it usually ends up to be with the town. Nate, are you still here? Somebody, <laughs> Nate, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, I mean, sometimes the chairs of the trust will sign it. It's just, I mean, the town and the trust are kind of one and the same. I know. So, so um, you know, I don't, I usually it is the trust. I don't. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, or it's just, we say that there's a grant agreement or some contract will be in place. I, I feel like it's, I know, I feel like the, most of these categories are pretty good, but like I said, I feel like then we get really detailed. And so you know, even like those funding guidelines we we're just talking about, you know, then when we have in our application, we have, required application attachments and there's, you know, community need. We talk about site and zoning and all these other things. We have this whole table of review criteria. And right now I feel like there's no consistency between, you know, like three parts of this document. And so if our funding guidelines, I mean, again, I think they could be a little broader and sim more, a little simplified. And we rely on then say a more thorough review criteria or something I don't know, you know, we're getting into some pretty detailed stuff up here. And so to me, like a grant agreement, to me, I would just say something like, you know, it can be as simple as like a bullet point, like, you know, no funding will be, you know, spent or, you know, until there's a contract or agreement in place. I mean, it's just, all, all we're doing is noting, letting someone know that there's, that, that this, you know, this happens. I don't. This stuff know. exists. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can, we can trim it a little bit, but there, but there should be a grant agreement. I think that's. A grant um, agreement somewhere with somebody. <laughs> you know, there has to be. We don't, we can't. The town's not going to give out money. Just here, take this. Goodbye. Right. And signed because, um, you know, sometimes it can take a little time for both parties to complete the signature right. of it. And yeah. there, I mean, we, we experienced that with Craig's drawer and they wanted the turnaround to be right away. Right. And this, this sentence about the applicant must submit an original copy of the signed agreement to the planning department. That seems really strange to me. Is that... Yeah, it's not necessary anymore. Okay. Do we really need to have six hard copies of something? I may uh, be getting ahead of the game here. 
No, that was, that hoping, was a lot. I was hoping 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I think like saying like an executed, right, or a signed agreement. I mean, we do a, you know, we want an original signature still. The accounting likes that. Um, but it can be a scan document. And sometimes we even do like, you know, allow e-signatures. Yeah, it's, it seems like that's a lot of paper for not any. And, and I feel like we don't need to get to that level of detail. I think like Erica said something like a signed or executed agreement or contract will be in place before any funds are obligated. Yeah, that's good. It's like, mm -hmm. we just... Also, uh, there's a bunch of things in here that refer to Nate. And it seems to me like maybe that should be some positional description and not Nate. He might not, not be here forever. Yeah, I and saw not that. Greg right. either. It was some kind of whatever the type, something, the housing person in town or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Or like the or the planning department or staff and the planning department. I think right. If we, I saw my name a few times. I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think people will figure it out. Right. Like they'll, you know, like if they don't know, they'll ask and someone right. will tell them. So. Right. So another thing with the project monitoring is that it, this is very specific to the SHI, which means an 80% ceiling and your the goal for development goes up to 100% AMI. So uh, I think that a conversation on your board really needs to be making sure that we're on the same page that not everything necessarily will go on the SHI. I felt like yeah, I we think... already had that conversation, but... I think this could be changed. I mean, project monitoring really is, you know, we, we could request, we could state, make a statement such as um, the trust will expect periodic um, progress reports um, and also plan in terms of their own internal checks and balances, better said somehow with other language, in terms of how, um, you know, they will efficiently complete the project, use the funding, et cetera. I don't know. Um, but I, I think project monitoring is really about us getting um, some data of how things are happening over time mm -hmm. as, as you know, submitted in terms of the okay. request. So simplify it a little bit, yep. make it a little bit less specific and nothing about AMI in this section. We do have yeah. reporting at the next bullet or number. And yeah, I mean, I will say that Greg and I have talked about setting up um, monitoring of affordable units anyways um, through the town's, you know, rental permitting or we have some new software. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I think if we combine eight and nine, I think they're, you know, like, kind of like what Erica said, I think we can get to it. I mean, monitoring makes it sound like we're actively doing something um, and we're not necessarily. And then many of these projects go through some type of permitting or financing where there's additional monitoring, whether it's from the town through the land use permit or, you know, from their other funders. And I did, we've never really set up this separate kind of trust monitoring. I mean, <clears> I, I think, I think it was wishful thinking, um, but. I mean, yeah. yeah, if it's related to the SHI, we, we have to do that as the town. So it's, you know, if it's kind of like Erica said, some other kind of reporting mechanism or, uh, you know, um, explanation of how we'd want to stay in touch with a, you know, someone who has a contract or something like, you know, to me, this would be like setting up, we say it in our, in our contract, but maybe it's saying something right. There's like a, you know, until occupancy or, you know, or something like we want some kind of periodic reporting, we kind of say it below, but I feel like, you know, it's important to kind of put that out there, but. So I, uh, I do think it's important because it's public resources and the trust has fiduciary responsibility of making sure that what you're investing in is if the funds are used how how you intended them to be used so certainly yeah. developments that have light tech low-income housing tax credits there are other monitoring but that's not you so somehow you want to just make sure that you stay um and some some you may feel more confident of because you know, if MHP, like we do monitoring of those in our portfolio, and then there's the agency that has the, if there's a comp permit, and like there are oftentimes with many developments, multiple entities that are kind of keeping an eye on it, but they're keeping an eye on it based on their requirements. So MHP does it based on what we require from the development and our regulatory agreement. We're not paying attention to CPA funds if it's following CPA requirements or 
perhaps a, a trust requirement. So that's just the um, the reason why it is important for you to have on the table of how are you going to make sure that it's following what you expect to happen with the development. So if I can just ask, um, <clears throat> generally, if it's something pretty big, like, you know, we use the RFP and, you know, and you're definitely right in terms of the expectations, because I, I remember with Wayfinders, I think we had a, a certain expectation of the configuration of how many apartments would go to what am I and numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering <clears throat> if, you know, the explicit piece of it is, is that much more uh, uh, stating that the trust will will uh, expect um, that uh, the agreements are fulfilled and that we that we will be asking for actually presentations. I mean, that's generally how we've done it. Is that and the the um, entities we've worked with have been very very um, mm -hmm. uh, responsive when awesome. we ask them to present. Um, but I think people should know that because there might be a developer that's not used to a trust saying, you know, at well, our next meeting, we really want a progress report, the data um, and how our, you know, our funds are being utilized. But I think up front, you know, uh, stating that there will be a process of monitoring, which includes reporting and it may also include presentations and that we expect them to, to you know, submit that and to be available to us. Yeah. Do you put that in your grant agreement? Do you know if it's any kind of language around reporting expectations in the grant agreement? Nate, do you know? I don't. <laughs> yeah, we do. We put in some reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. So let's give some thought to possibly combining eight and nine and simplifying the language a little bit. That'd be good. So I think that you could take out, I think you could just take out 10, this kind of language. I, I think it should be just understood that the trust, one, I don't think you want to put a minimum of three years. That clearly no. hasn't happened. But I, I just don't think that you need to tell people that you can change your own document personally. And then this is just getting into the specific application. Yeah. Okay. So what seems like a good, wow, already 1149, um, a good path forward. Uh, I would be, I would be willing to start with just some of the stuff we've talked about, but then I think that some of you are gonna have to get into the weeds around a lot of some of the technical stuff. So I could start with a first um, attempt at mod making some modifications and then Pass it back to the group. Okay. I'm sure you're going to do this, Shelly, but could you use a strikeout? Sorry, Carol. Yeah. So we can see what we're striking yeah. out. Yep. 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 I'll do that. Okay. So I'll start and I'll try to get Makes it to sense. in about a, a week or week or so, maybe two weeks, about one to two weeks, one to two weeks to at least get us started. Okay. I'd be willing to try to work on it some more after whatever Shelly does, if I can, yep. if I remember what we've talked about <laughs> well enough. Anyway, well, I'd be, I'd, what, at whatever point it is that I would be willing to be one, or at least one of the people who tries to work further on drafting it. When I can also, when I'm making changes, I can make notes of like the stuff yeah. to address to, to, help, to help with that, help facilitate that Thank a little you. bit. And then like the stuff I can't answer. Uh, yep. Lynn's document, um, is it a guideline and an application form? I mean, I, I'd be, you know, curious just to, I don't think you need to like, you know, I think the, the front piece right here is important to kind of set the stage, but I'd be curious to know if you had a template or some other examples. Um, you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I think we ask for a lot of information and sometimes I'm not sure we get it all. And so it's just one of those things, mm -hmm. you know, how necessary is it to, um, you know, for instance, you know, have people re reference uh, the master plan and housing production plan and describe need when we then also have um, information asking about targeted population and other things. So I feel like, you know, there's probably ways to, again, simplify it and understand the project, um, you know, because like, for instance, when Craig's doors came or others, we don't necessarily hold them to all of this. And so I, 
you know, if, if like, to me, like right now, someone could say, well, how has the trust made decisions if it hasn't, you know, used this review criteria? And I think what the trust mm -hmm. has funded has been important and they've done, I think is, you know, they have a good discussion about it, but, you know, I'd be curious, like I said, if, if you have examples of even other review criteria, just to, I'd be curious to see what it is. Um, you know, I think we set it up almost like it was, um, like, like from our request for a proposal document. Right. Exactly. That's you what know. it looks like. Exactly. It's too much. Yeah. So and um, I don't, has anybody ever submitted this exact form that we've approved? I mean, is this used or do we just get in, information that includes a bunch of it or has it been used, Nate? Valley's kind of taken it and uh, mm. tried to use it, but you know, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. But this this document doesn't have criteria, does it? Do you have criteria somewhere else? Yeah, at the end, keep going. It, it's very end. Got table. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you know, there we are. <laughs> okay. It's an RFP. Exactly. That's what it looks like. Okay. So um, with so I'm doing more of these just in the last year or two with trust. So I don't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to work towards a template that I feel would feel comfortable presenting to communities. Um, what we, what I tried doing with Lynn was because it was this thing where I read through the criteria and everything. And I was like, do you actually follow this across the board with everyone? And they also had a list of what they required the, the applicant to submit. And it was just like, they, at the one point they have a sensitivity to helping to support smaller developers that have less capacity, but then they have this criteria, you know, that's like <laughs> really a lot. And it's, it's, it goes against the value of supporting smaller scale developers. So we tried to modify the language a little bit and, you know, trying to encourage them to just not have the, the planning team basically do kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with developers and do it more, more fair because you just don't want to be in a position where, you know, it hasn't happened yet for the communities, but you don't want to have it where someone says that it was an unfair process because it was kind of quiet conversations that didn't follow kind of a broader process. So it's tr just trying to do some of that balancing. But I think that, um, I, I think here how you have unacceptable, acceptable, advan advantageous, highly advantageous, that that's probably that degree of um, being that specific is probably unnecessary, that I think it could be simplified, a, a more simple process. And Lynn's definitely is. So, um, I'll do a little bit more of maybe a document of showing other ways that other communities have done it. And then maybe that can help with your conversation about how do you, how do you simplify it? And I would actually move this from the bottom of the application and I'd actually put it in the guidelines. Right. So then product. the application form has other, you know, kind of questions. And so to me, right, that's where I said, it feels like we had three different kind of guidelines in this yeah. document. Yeah. And so yeah. As long as they're consistent, like I think, for instance, like financial feasibility is important to understand. Are we really going to go through and like rate, you know, one proposal? I mean, we kind of know, like we can ask them to show a budget and other things. And I think it's important to understand it. But to me, that was comparative review criteria. And are we really saying, you know, are we going to look at it and just say, oh, this is not financially feasible? Like we don't, I mean, you know. Yeah, like all this stuff under six is... I mean, that is, <laughs> that, that's yeah, so I detailed. Like I, right. I've, I, I, I don't think that it should, I think we really need to rethink that kind of that much detail. And like you said, if we're funding certain or other types of activities or projects, it might not even be relevant. You know, this seems, right. you know, so, I mean, you know, sometimes the trust will say, right, if we're facilitating or seeding projects, like sometimes you know, there could be a smaller amount that helps get a project moving and it's not even, it's, you know, it's pre-development, right? It's not any of this. Um, right. But also like we don't, it, it, there's a challenge with housing development in the state and some of it is because boards try to do a different board's job and it's not really the trust job to do all of the design review. Like you may want, you want to have some familiarity and some understanding, but I, I think we want to get away from giving board members the illusion that they can do a different board's 
job. Does does that sound fair? Just the way that it slows down the process if we expect yeah. everybody to do design review. And that's, you have to kind of trust the process in the community. And the trust job is more to consider the overall project and then and then trust that the that the design review process in town will take care of that and that you're really looking at the feasibility of the development, kind of some of the, the, the broader kind of themes and and values, but not the not the specifics that other boards and other staff are responsible for. That's really important, I think. It also doesn't set up bizarre expectations that won't be met. Exactly. So. Exactly. And it happens in communities all the time that boards that it's not their purview, they slow things down. So Nate, would you kind of agree with some of that kind of? Yeah. I mean, I think what could be important here would be like, you know, providing concept plans or schematics. And yeah. I mean, and then we don't have this detailed list, right? I mean, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's actually okay. funny. The uh, town is writing a solar bylaw, and it's been going on for a while. And it's um, it's like uh, seventeen pages, and it has a lot of detailed stuff. And so staffs looking at it, it's been referred as a zoning amendment. But um, it's kind of like this, where you know, an applicant who's proposing a larger scale solar project has to do, you know, right now the way it's written is like you know, soil tests, measure every tree on a property, um, determine if it's a wildlife corridor and somehow do monitoring to determine that, um, figure out, you know, uh, soil types every within every 10 foot grid, um, you know, really detailed stuff. And I think some of it's important, but some of it's like, well, you know, if, it, if there's wetlands, it's going to go to the conservation commission. So they're trying to write in as if it's mm -hmm. something else, you know, if it, if there's biomap or other things, it's going to go uh, to natural heritage anyways. Um, so, yeah, I feel like the way the way this is written right now, it's like we're actually almost we expect someone to come in with like a comprehensive permit application to the trust for yeah. funding. And most of yeah. the projects we've supported, they're not even at that permitting phase, right? They're trying right. to right. Um, get pre-development or they're trying to, like you said, get the local funding first um, as a match to then go out and get other pre-development funding or, you know, uh, so... I mean, I like yeah. having, I like, have, like I said, I think most of these bullets are usually pretty good. It's just, we then uh, elaborate and get so much detail under it that it it's beyond what I, I think is necessary. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like the development team. Great. Let's just have a list of it. I mean, are we really going to check resumes? I, you know, for instance, like, are we, what are, you know, I don't, <laughs> are we going to do a peer review of their, you know, their marketing plan? I just, not sure we're going to. Yeah, okay. well, so it does. Con it did concern me in all those, you know, uh, advantageous and highly advantageous when you're talking about who the developer is. All of it makes it seem like the only way to be highly advantageous is to have been doing this for 20 years and have a staff of 25 or else forget it because you can't compete, which I don't know. We want some sense of ability to do something, but. All of that stuff seemed to make it like we're always going to be dealing with the same people because nobody else has a chance anyway. Yeah, I I think a way to come at this is to sort of put a, a caveat kind of up front, noting that applications will be reviewed in context. Um, so something some, something that addresses the fact of if you are very early in your project, you're not expected to have a lot of this stuff if you're asking for pre-development money or um or uh, acquisition funds or something like that, you know, uh, you know, versus like Valley just came to us for some last mile money and did provide a lot of this stuff. I, I could see a slightly different scenario of that transaction where, you know, and we kind of did say, hey, tell us more about, you know, your pro forma and how our last mile dollars fit into this, you know, but it, but that project was much further down the line. So I think we can, th the way that we can sort of leave ourselves a window there is just to say, is to note somehow that projects will be considered, um, uh, co the comprehensive nature of your application will be evaluated in the context of where you are in your project timeline. Um, what? What if we were to make all this much simpler and make the simplest thing that we need and then say additional information yeah. may be requested if relevant or something or other. Mm. So we don't have so much stuff mm. here, but we can ask for more if it makes sense. 
that's another way to put it. Yeah, I mean, if if Valley had not provided the pro forma, for example, when they when they asked for that second tranche of funds, I think we would have been well. We would have asked them for it. You know, reasonably equipped to ask for it. So, and another thing that so we're at time, but another thing to some of Nate's point, this community need section number three. So, um, what I pushed Lynn to do because they had, they have a housing plan and they were using similar kind of language like to, but I am pushing back on them to say that to expect the applicant to go through 150 pages or 500 pages oh, of your plans is really, that's so, that's so much. And those plans are much broader than what the trust is focusing on. You've started with those plans and then you've identified some key goals. So instead of expecting an applicant to go through these much broader plans, which might end up with an application that's beyond what you're wanting, you really should um, direct them again to your, like the, the job is, I think, the trust to identify based on the needs in the community, based on these other plans, what you're focusing on. And that's what we've been trying to do with the goals. So I think in, so you what we did with Lynn is we we you we started with kind of their housing plan and some language around how that's the trust guide this trust started with that plan and then from that has created these goals or these eligible activities these things that they're focusing on and then added a link to the housing plan if someone wants to dig in more but not expecting the applicant to read the big plans and then justify their application based on that they're justifying their application based on the goals that the trust has identified so I, I would take out some sense. of this language instead of expecting that. You really want them to be tailoring it to what you want, not to these much bigger plans. I agree. But we could include language, which I think can be helpful, particularly given how your mission has really said that you're a municipal entity. So I think that we could add language somewhere of saying that the trust respects these plans, has started with these plans, that th these are guides for the trust somehow, if that seems important. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, but right. I, I mean, to me, that's the work of the trust or staff is to say that would be to do this, right? I mean, it just seems, I agree that it seems strange we're putting all this on an applicant. I mean, if someone comes in with a, a weird proposal, like we'll know, we should know if it if it's part mm -hmm. of the plan or our action right. strategy or something. So I just, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like, referencing them is good. I think then it becomes more of, you know, like if there's a question of what the population they're serving, then that's something that the trust discussed, not, you know, we're not asking them to write, you know, to synthesize, write hundreds of pages into, a, right. you know. Uh, right. Or like reference, you know, page 57 of whatever plan, like that's, that's kind of crazy. I, I gotta okay. Ahead. So go ahead. I think you had to jump off. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll take a, a first effort of making some of the changes that we've talked about. I'll make it so that it's marked up so you can see it. And then I'll add some notes of other things that we've talked about. I'll probably send it to everyone, but maybe Carol will take the next, the next um, attempt. And um, so we didn't really get to talking about an, any kind of proposal of an implementation plan. But I think last time we did talk about what people are interested in. And um, I think the issue for the next meeting is what do we do or how do we engage with any kind of public feedback that we've got? That's a part that seems the most um, priority on, for that. Okay. On, I, I don't know exactly what how we're going to do that, but maybe we don't have time to figure that out right now anyway. Do you want the just, next meeting? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and to add on to that, I think we made a commitment that we were also going to present it to the possibly the town council and to the plan, uh, to the CPA and maybe planning board too. We did. I thought we had talked about <laughs> engaging uh, some of our town committees and understanding where we're heading or where we. Yeah, but have... that's part of the plan, and we yeah. haven't adopted the plan yet, so we don't have to do it yet. Uh, no, no, I thought it was way before. Once we officially decided um, <laughs> on this that would be the beginning but that's okay we can decide in our meeting so in right. october can we just do the feedback that you received at the public event and then have everyone vote and then talk about how are you going to start sharing this right okay so um 
would you be comfortable with perhaps Greg and I coming up with just a general proposal of kind of how to move forward in terms of implementation to then maybe present to you, the small group, to see if you'd be okay with at least just starting the conversation or, or having a conversation at the meeting in October? Could that work? Yeah. Works for um, me. That means you'd, you'd give some stuff to us by email and we would check yeah. in by email or something if it made sense to us to go forward. Yeah. And that's fine as long as there's not some stupid open meeting law thing that it and violates. It, it, yeah, and it won't be a lot. It'll be it'll be simple and some general kind of idea. And then for you to at least review it and see if you're comfortable enough for it to go to the meeting in October. And if you feel like, no, no, you need some conversation, then then we'll just hold off. I think, yeah, that, I, I think generally I just want to sort of s s s sketch something explicitly. My goal would be to like leave the October meeting um, with at least some amount of trust member with all trust members so, sort of saying, I want to work on this. And then maybe some of them or all of them agreeing to say, I'll, I'll go pair off with my counterpart who also wants to work on, you know, on strategy 1A um, and we'll come back in November and uh, report what we talked about. Um, so I think that the sort of action I'd hope to engender is that folks do a little offline work with a partner, you know, um, that's, I think, what we're trying to uh, encourage here. So, 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 so we'll maybe Shelly and I will come up with some sort of scheme where, that that leads to that, you know, or at least to that that invitation, <laughs> at least you know, and and we'll we'll see how folks respond. Does that make sense, Shelly? In sync with what you're talking about? Yeah. So I'll just mm. quick, yes, yes. That's okay. I don't want to take any more time. Yes. Okay. Well, so um, if you're okay with that, then I'll connect with Greg to schedule time, maybe next week to have a chat. And we'll either say yes, go for it, or no, we're not ready. Let's come back here to talk about it some more. Yes, That's I don't think fine. we need to debate it over email because we don't want to get into open meeting and any of those kind of concerns, but to at least Sounds good. see if you're ready. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being here, Nate. Hey, sure. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, no, I'm glad we're doing this because I think okay. you know the trust is getting some payment in lieu and there's some other projects coming up. So um, and the housing production plan is being developed. So I think you know it's a really good time to have yeah. this happen, You know, look at everything. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think there's going to probably be a lot of activity or could be in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. And so right. this is, you know. All right. I got I to gotta jump yeah. here, but all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks. So Bye. long, everybody. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Appreciate your Thank time. Thank you. Thanks.